All right, everybody, we are finally at the end of our Best of 2022 series. And what better way to end it than an overblown, overstuffed end of award ceremony? All right, everybody, I hope you're all dressed for the occasion for our final award for this series. But, as with any award shows, we got plenty more things lined up, including awards that were too important not to mention, but not important enough to get their own full-blown episode. So let's start with that. But wait, before we do that, we have a very special limited time offer. If anyone orders me a pizza in the next 10 minutes, you will earn yourself one imaginary thumbs up. Show it to your friends, maybe. Lord over your family, possibly. But remember, the offer expires in 10 minutes. Just like the Game Awards, it's important to give out our most important award at the very beginning. So I think we can all agree that this is the most important award. So, the award for Best Josh for organizing a video game award show goes to Josh Blaser. The committee here has unanimously agreed. And while Josh couldn't be here to accept, he is very gracious and happy to earn the award, wherever he might be. For our next award, for most disappointing game of 2022, we have a somewhat of a tie between the final quarter of Elden Ring and Warhammer 40k Darktide. Elden Ring may be a fantastic game and probably one of the most shiny examples of how to do open world design right. But it does not excuse how much of an annoying slog the final quarter of the game is, with enemies who have patterns longer than your ability to dodge them. And if anyone disagrees with this, or tries and argue that the Elden Beast fight was a really great final boss, please disregard all their thoughts on Elden Ring. And even though, again, a lot of systems work, it definitely had kind of like that From Software curse, it seems, of running out of steam for the final parts of the game. Now, more seriously speaking, though, Dark Tide is a very big disappointment for me. I was really hoping that a more gun-based focus on the Vermintide formula would have done a lot better. But instead, we had a game that was heavily driven by monetization a lack of kind of the character dynamics and fun writing of Vermintide, and the game's focus on monetization over gameplay is certainly frustrating, with the game right now sitting at mostly negative on Steam, and there have yet to be any massive or substantial updates to it since the game was launched. So, unfortunately with that, it makes it an easy pick for most disappointing game. For our award, for Best Game Within a Game Game Award, that goes to Tunic. Tunic's manual is a just amazing example of a puzzle box that unveils itself slowly but surely over the course of the game. While there was no way I was solving it and I had to resort to plenty of guides online, it is such a fascinating kind of system to put into an action-adventure game with some beautiful art and aesthetics tied to it. Our next award is the Extra 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 Credit Award for a game that went above and beyond in a very surprising way. And that goes to the mobile game Memento Mori. This is an idle RPG with gameplay as basic as that sounds. It is a game that you watch numbers go up, other numbers go down, and that's it. So you wouldn't think there would be a lot more to talk about with this game. And yet, from an aesthetic and presentation point of view, this game is like a 20 out of 10. The watercolor art used for the character designs and backgrounds puts it up heads over heels above even some of the massive AAA games released in 2022. You can keep your super realistic, grim, dark characters. I'll go for super watercolor any day of the week. And the music of this game is fantastic, both in a kind of performance style, as well as the it will emotionally wreck you style, if you're not prepared for it. And if they ever put out like a digital CD of all the songs in this game, I would probably buy it no questions asked. And if you want to see what I mean, 
you can look up the videos for the song Everglow and just be aware you may not want to watch it in public or people may wonder why you just started like all of a sudden like crying out of nowhere. But while Memento Mori has some amazing music, my award for favorite soundtrack will go to River City Girls 2 and the original song from River City Girls 0. The music of the game perfectly accompanies the gameplay and they're all just amazing earworms that have been stuck in my head and I've been humming for the better part of 2022. While the music may not appeal to everyone, if you love that kind of like 80s, 90s kind of riffs and charm, these are some great songs to listen to. And a surprising twist, I like to preemptively give the award possibly for best soundtrack of 2023 to Limbus Company. The next game from Project Moon, where Library Aruna is one of the few games where I bought the digital soundtrack for, and I'm sure the music in this one will be haunting, disturbing, beautiful, and loving all at the same time. For the award for a game that broke Josh Award, that goes to Crash Bandicoot 4. While technically not a game that came out in 2022, it was ported to the PC then. And this nightmare of a 3D platformer, trying to do it at 106%, basically broke my will to keep going in that game. And for anyone who has managed to do that task, two thumbs up for you. So with that said, before we get to best of show of 2022, it's time for another interruption. For those of you who somehow did not watch all the other episodes of the series, and you haven't, again, gone and watched them at least five dozen times by now and told your friends to watch it, here is a brief recap that Future Josh is going to put on to let you know what were some of the other awards and their winners.
All right, I hope future Josh did a good job with editing the presentation. But it's now time for our best of show category. Coming in at number three, I'm going to be giving it to, well, a game that should come as no surprise at this point, and that is Elden Ring. Despite the issues with the final quarter of the game, whether you love it or hate it, you cannot deny the sheer quality of this experience at the start. This is easily one of the best open world design games we've seen in some time, and one of the few games outside of like the Elder Scrolls titles that really gets this idea of, hey, there's that cool building in the distance, let's go over there. Oh, it's an elevator, where could it lead? And then we go to this massive underground place with all kinds of unique enemies and situations. And From Software certainly deserves a lot of credit for just how well they managed to kind of reapply the Souls-like formula to the fact that the world is now open. There's a lot of memorable moments in this game. For the first time you go to Khalid, or you get trapped and sent to Khalid, reaching the castle for the first time, beating some of these massive bosses, going to magic school and fighting wizards and zombies for other reasons. And the game, again, just really does a great job of harmonizing the open world going where you want style with these very well-defined and deep level designs of each one of the major areas. The game is gorgeous to look at and the sheer variety of builds is fantastic. And another aspect I think FromSoftware deserves credit on is that despite this being the first time they made jumping, one of the primary mechanics of their systems, it works pretty well. And there are some very interesting and challenging platforming areas, including being able to do a lot of skips if you are careful enough or crazy enough to try and make those jumps. And another aspect of like the sheer quality that Elden Ring has brought is that it has gone to kind of redefine open world RPGs and from software's own design. And we're probably going to have this period where it will become the new metric that other games are going to be judged by. And we're going to kind of see this kind of pre Elden Ring world of design and this kind of post Elden Ring world of design. And that certainly deserves a best of show mention here. And like I said in the most disappointing section, that even though the final core of the game did lose me, still the overall experience is fantastic. And as I've said in the past, even a bad from software game is still one of the best games of the year. So with that said, I am still really looking forward to the next Armored Core, and if we can get Bloodborne on the PC, please, that would be fantastic. Or number two, it's another game that we can practically define as kind of the pre and post era of its existence, and that is Vampire Survivors. Another game that you either love or hate, but you cannot, again, deny all the smart aspects of its design, from progression to presentation, despite the fact that it features very basic looking graphics and characters. And while people have certainly pointed out the developer's background in casino gambling is a factor here, it once again is proof of just how effective short form engagement really is in terms of keeping someone invested in a title, a project, whatever. The, you know, jingle that you hear when you open up a treasure chest has yet to be replicated by another game. The game looks good, it looks crazy to watch, and the fact that it's locked to about 30 minutes means that it has a very great flow of what you expect when you play a given play, but still the variance of what perks or what builds and items you want to focus on. And as I've said, this is one of those games that it has, by the fact that we literally had its own category this year, has become kind of the, almost like the same level of, almost like this awareness or this explosion that we saw with games like Slay the Spire, FTL, and Darkest Dungeon. That they've gone on to become synonymous names of their respective styles that no other game, even if they have arguably been better design-wise, has managed to break through in the same way as that first title. And who knows, we may never see a Vampire Survivors 2, or kind of like 
the monster train to slay the spire of vampire survivors. But this is still a fantastic game and definitely one that if you are a designer looking to learn or understand engagement and retention of a game, this is an amazing one to study and why it gets number two. So with that said, for number one of 2022, it goes to one of the games that just really came out of nowhere for me that I ended up loving, and that is Ast Libra Revision. This was a game that we found randomly as one of the festivals. We played it for a little bit on stream, it was okay, and then I decided to play more of it off stream. And then I saw all the different perks you unlock, the massive passive tree, how all this equates to different builds, and just the rapid hole of content. And I said to myself, well, this is definitely the game for me. And I played it through all the way on Hell Difficulty, and as an editor's note, do not play this game on Hell Difficulty or higher if you value your time or sanity. But this is a game that just keeps going and going, and best represents again that kind of indie design and ingenuity. This is a game that was de developed over, I think it was like 15 years, using lots of shareware, free assets, and licensed music along those lines, and yet it all fits in its own like weird and strange way. And Again, this is one of those titles where you will either play this for like 30 or 40 minutes and never look at it again, or you're going to go all in and see everything this game has to offer. And I hope it does not take 15 years to see a sequel to it. But they've already announced that there will be a expansion DLC, so at some point I will go back to it and see what else they'll add. But again, this is one of those games that could not have come from anywhere else but the independent scene. While it does have a very interesting story, this is still a mechanically driven game at heart. And just again, one of those titles that you either love it or hate it. And for me, I certainly loved it. So with that said, we are finally done. 2022 is officially over as of probably by the time you're watching this, January 23rd. And with that, we'll get back to some regular content here on the channel. Let me know what you think about my favorite picks or your favorite picks down in the comments below. Do the liking, subscribing as well, and come back for daily discussions on game design here and on game wisdom, where some of the are on science of games. So with that said, I am finally free. I don't have to play any more video games. I can leave and never come back. It's My job here is done at last.